Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 110 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. We are still working really hard on the bronze work, casting and fitting the hanging and lodging knees and the floors. It's going really well and we've sped up our production time at the foundry. We're now producing an average of two pieces per day. So this week we're going to be focusing mostly on the fitting process for the hanging knees but we're also making rivets, fastening floors and of course we're going to have a little bit more bronze pouring footage for you too. So now I'm just going through the process of fitting one of these hanging knees into the boat. So now I'm just placing it in the boat and trying to figure out how it should sit and what needs to be changed, what needs to be ground off to make it fit how I want it. I've already done a little bit on this, so it is getting there. But right now, the biggest thing is that it needs to come up a little bit. And then somehow, at some point, I'm gonna to have to change the angle of this top arm as well because it's not quite the right angle. So I'm now happy with the fit of this floor. I've ground the back away and it's fitting up nicely against the frame and the deck beam. I did actually bend this one a little bit by clamping it to the table and setting up another clamp and pulling this arm downwards so that I bent them apart and that actually did work. And although before I bent it, it could actually be clamped into position, this way it naturally follows that shape, uh, which is a little bit better. So now just got to make it pretty and grind the bits that you can see, polish it, sand it, So when we first started fitting the knees, what we would do is actually shape the knee to fit the boat first and then shape the inside faces, the ones that you can see. But after I'd done one or two like that, I realized that there's actually a better way and that relates to how the knees actually go around the beam shelf. Now the beam shelf only has a very small radius on the corner and so to get the knee to go around it you have to cut almost a sharp 90 degree angle in that inside corner of the knee which is fine because there's a lot of radius there, there's plenty of material but to get maximum strength out of these brackets and to avoid even the idea of a weak spot the better way to do it really is to keep a round on the inside of that corner and cut a little notch into the beam shelf. And so so that's what we're doing on the hanging knees now and to do that it's actually better to shape the inside faces of the knee first all the visible faces and then when you offer it up to fit it to the boat you can mark the notch in the beam shelf off of the sides of the knee and so you're not going to find gaps appearing either side of the knee as you would if you were to cut the notch and then grind the knee afterwards.
So while all this work is going on up here, there's also a lot of work going on down at the foundry. We've sped up our progress. We're now casting an average of two pieces per day. Now you guys met Will uh, in the last video. Will is a neighbor and a friend, and he's just kind of helping out when he can. Uh, so he's not here this week. He's not been kicked out because he cut the puzzle up. Uh, that was a joke. Sorry to anyone who was offended by that joke, which apparently some people were. So Will's not here right now, but he'll be back. But we have got Rowan here. Hi, I'm Rowan. You might remember me from the second frame raising. Over the last couple of months, I drove across the country and then worked on building a sauna in the middle of the woods. And then I drove back across the country. And now I'm here ready to do more work on the tally ho. What? Are we ever gonna get along? Right here, I have a custom-made bird hook. It's been cast in bronze, uh, so that poncho can't eat it. Have fun trying to bite through that. Nope, so we're still not really that great friends. <laughs> That's what she thinks of you, bro. Oh, cool. <laughs> Are you gonna clean that up? <laughs> well, there's only so much grinding that you can put into a YouTube video, and uh, I don't think you guys need to see the full 120 hours of grinding footage that we could have uploaded this week. And we're all getting involved in the grinding, uh, everyone apart from Matt, who uh, conveniently tripped and hurt his thumb, so uh, he's unable to grind or be at the foundry, which we're all a bit suspicious about, but it has swollen up quite a lot, so I guess it's true. Now he's been relegated to uh, non-thumb intensive jobs, and luckily uh, making rivets falls under that category. So Matt is now rivet master and has been tasked with making the 3,000 or so copper rivets which we're going to need to fasten the hull planking to the frames. Everyone else though is stuck with grinding. Um, David is grinding a floor at the moment and fitting it and doing a very good job with that. Rosie is grinding hanging knees and fitting them and cutting the notches into the beam shelf which she was a little bit nervous about but she's done a very good job on it and actually her work uh, has been excellent so far. She's proving herself to be a very quick learner and a very skilled craftsperson so it's great to have her on the team. Uh, everyone else is doing great too. Um, we're all just grinding merrily away so uh, that's about it. I better get back to the grinder. Uh, so we got this floor back from the foundry that we cast uh, a couple days ago and we're doing the preliminary grinding, just taking off any high spots.
Now we're gonna take this over to the frame number 10 and uh, try to get her fit. Sorry, I'm out of breath. So the way that we'll find the high spots on these floors here is we'll take a ruler and slide it between the frames and the floor itself. And anywhere where we hit a spot uh, where the ruler can't go up anymore, we know right about there is where we're making contact. And we'll do that a number of times until we find that all our faces here match as flush as we can to where we want them to be. Painting a layer of uh, pine tar, turpentine, I forgot the third ingredient, one too. Um, spots in the keel, and mostly the center line, I guess, in general, just to prevent checking. Also, to it's really important to get it on because the rabbit's been cut and it hasn't had any. And I'm going to start at the stem and point my way back to the stern. So you get you're getting gaps up both sides all the way up. Uh huh. What that means is that the the, the plywood we added at the bottom is really doing good. its job. Yeah. Which is which is raising the floor a little bit. So it will seem too small, but just one of the means is we need to take start taking off. You need to start taking material off the bottom. You probably will have to take off some on somewhere on, on the like sides the as well. Okay. Gonna tell us what's going on here. What's going on is I'm making rivets at record speed. <laughs> why? Uh, why have you been put on this job today? <laughs> what happened there? I tripped. <laughs> but I feel like it's actually been an advantage because I figured out that a much faster way to do this is to just do that, and then you can kind of just, with enough pressure, uh, put that on without the whole hammering business. So you figure that out because you're trying to do it just with one hand? With one hand, yeah. Cool. Is your hand all right? Yeah, it's fine. It's going to be fine in three days, I'm okay. predicting. <laughs> How many rivets have you made? This whole, I made five gallons almost. Wow. I didn't know rivets could be measured in... Uh, <laughs> in when you're making 4,000 of them, yeah. Oh God. Uh, wow, I really can't get too straight face. Nope, I can't start. <laughs> I've been working on this hanging knee. I've been grinding it since it came back from the foundry. I've given it a light pass over the faces that mate to the boat, but I haven't started fitting it yet. But I'm doing some preliminary stages of polishing the visible faces before it starts to get fit to the boat. I started grinding with a grinding disc and then was also using a flap wheel and then the preliminary stages of polishing I'm using this red scotch bright pad 
and then I will switch to a green scorch bright pad which is a higher grit and then at that point I will take the hanging knee into the boat and start fitting it. I'm about to start dry fitting this hanging knee that I've been grinding and polishing today. I'm going to give it a rough fit first and I'm going to clamp it pretty much in the place where I want it to be so that I can mark out for a notch that we're going to take out of this bead uh, so that the piece will slide right into place. <laughs> and this will be the first time that I have cut into tally -ho, which uh, is not exciting. <laughs> I'll just get it on film when I take out a huge splinter. <laughs> no, I won't, I won't. So our, our aftmost floor, the last one back here, uh, go, goes up the stern knee shaft log combination. The shaft log is bored right here to accept the, the prop shaft and the stern tube. There'll be a stuffing box mounted on this face. Um, so aft of here is our last bronze floor. If we were to put a, a pair of bolts here all the way through, they'd, uh, they'd be too close to that tube on, on the inside. All this tapers down. Um, it gets narrower and narrower back there. So we'd actually only be able to get one bolt in center line. It would come out the back of the stern post at this angle. And, uh, but that would intersect the stern tube um, so we cannot put a through bolt there. I'm going to put in what I call drift, or what Leo calls jump. Um, and those are going to be three quarter inch bronze rod, uh, essentially a very large nail. And what I'm actually going to do is on that rod, I'll put a whole bunch of little dimples that'll act as grabbers. And those will provide a little bit of holding power. So this is going to be a floor drift, so I'm going to put a, about an inch of threads on top um, and that's just going to get a nut um, and I'll have a little bit sticking out and I'll peen that over to disrupt the threads 
uh, so that nut can't come loose, but it's gonna get driven down like this, uh, and it bottoms out in into the wood. It doesn't come through the other side. quarter turn or something. So far I've made about 1,500 rivets, I think. The rivet machine is pretty amazing in terms of its efficiency and speed, but it definitely takes like an element of skill that I was not anticipating. You, you can end up with heads that are all wonky like that, um, which is a problem because when we do the planking, the counter bore has to be centered over the hole, so it's really important that the heads are centered over the, the shaft of the rivet. But I think I'm getting the hang of it after 16 hours of it so far, so only two more days to go. <laughs> So at this stage the hanging knee has been fit to the frames and the deck beam and I'm working on the inside visible faces. After all the faces are nice and flat and fair with no big lumps then we move on to scotch bright pads. These are actually really really effective for getting out the marks from the grinder and the coarse sanding discs. And then we go on to much finer sanding discs using uh, this sander with a soft pad underneath. So I'm starting off with 800 grit and I'm going to work up through 1000 grit, 1500, 2,000 and 3,000 and then it will be ready for polish.
you're basically just just trying to cover every every part of this. You, right. you don't have to worry about keeping it on the flats. You can go around the corners on it. Okay. It's fine. It's a soft pad, so it won't damage the pad. Oh, it's looking nice. Mm. Yeah. I'm done riveting. I made 3,800 rivets and my thumb healed in the process of making all those rivets, so I'm back to working on floors and knees. Um, David is down at the foundry right now, but he did most of the work on this floor. Right now, I'm just taking it to the final, final step, which is polishing it using three different compounds and three different foam pads. The first one is wool. Oh my god, I just looked in it and it blinded me. So as we're finishing these floors, Pete has been bolting them through the keel timber. Once we get onto planking, then the wings of the floors will be fastened um, through the planks and the frames. That's the main structural component that holds the keel to the rest of the boat. Right, well, we're nearly at the end of this two week period um, and I think we've done pretty well. We've definitely sped up the casting process a lot. We've sped up the grinding process a lot. And we've now cast all of the floors and we've almost finished fitting and polishing them all. Uh, there's just two left to finish. Uh, we've cast about 21 of the 28 uh, of the other pieces, the hanging knees, lodging knees and breast hooks and so we've just got a few left to cast and we've um, finished fitting and polishing uh, eight or nine of them and then a few more in various stages of production so I'm really hoping that we're going to finish casting all together sometime next week which is going to be very exciting and call for a bit of a celebration I think and then we'll have another week or two just of grinding and fitting the last of them but very soon now hopefully we'll be actually getting into planking the boat which will be really nice. Now I just want to express my enormous gratitude to everyone who's watching but especially those who are supporting and funding this project. For those of you that don't know and I do get asked quite often how this project is funded, it's not sponsored, uh, I don't have millions of dollars in a bank account, this project is funded 100% now by the donations of people watching these videos on YouTube uh, and the small amount of ad revenue from those views as well. But the power of all those people coming together has made this possible and it blows me away every single day, it really does. Um, I was expecting to be having to work several different jobs at the same time as this, going to and fro internationally uh, in order to make the money to make this happen. Uh, it would take many times longer than it is to do that and of course right now it wouldn't even be possible at all um, so it really brings home how um, lucky i am that this has gone the way it has uh, it is a great joy to share this project with you all so fingers crossed that we'll be able to keep going and um, every day we're getting closer uh, every day we're working harder and uh, every day i'm more grateful so thank you and i'll see you next time